Tax day is upon us. We got receipts. So Cat Williams, as you know, has taken the internet and the comedy world by storm. We reacted to his interview with Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp. Absolutely insane. Shots fired left, right, and everywhere. But what I have found very, very interesting is that since then, like normally when you have a situation like this and you take shots at, you know, other Hollywood stars like a Kevin Hart or other people that are bigger, normally they won't respond, right? They'll just kind of sweep it under the rug and let, you know, the next viral thing of the internet come through and just like let it spin out of the news cycle. But because this has blown up so much, everybody has felt the need to make some type of video or some type of response to this and weigh in on it. Which is really, really interesting to me because I wonder, I wonder if there's a little bit of guilt there underneath of it all. But anyways, we got the receipts. We're going to dive into it right here, right now. Let's do it. Is that I'm quite likely to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. And the reason I He's had testifying. to come is because you've made a safe place for the truth to be told. You gonna set the record straight? Are you kidding me? You let Ricky Smiley sit here and you said out that mouth, you stole Friday After Next, the one I was in. You stole the show in Friday After, in Friday after Next. Yeah. This man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was going to be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams was going to be fr was going to be the Santa Claus. And somebody said, "No, we want you to play Mike, the uh, thieving ass Mike. Santa Claus." <laughs> right? And then, yeah, cuz Cat Williams is going to be the Santa Claus. Right. Now, let's three quick points. Three quick. You mean in Hollywood they cast a 5 foot 5 black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds? That's your story. This was epic. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it? At home. Friday after next come out. I get my kids. Where are we going? We're going to the movies. We're going to see Friday After Next. Right. But they didn't know I was in the theater. Right. He wasn't even at the premiere. I'm out in Hollywood. They switched off roles. You take this and he, what? And then, uh, and they switched it over. Right. That's I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. When I, when I auditioned, I saw that there was an Ice Cube response, and if we got time, I'm gonna dive into the Ice Cube response at the end of this one, because I think this situation around this is pretty interesting. I auditioned for Mighty Mike. Right. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? Hit my role like in four days. Right. They shot all my stuff in four days, the truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. And that's what Ricky Smiley that's was right. okay with. You know, so when I went in there to audition, I'm at the toilet. Uh, when, when Cat Williams went, right. went to use the bathroom, right. that was, that was, that's the line I had to use to audition. I put in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Now, what was Ricky Smiley's next movie? Was it First Sunday? The big movie, then I... I have seen, uh... As I'm like diving more into stuff, like Cube talking about it, and some people confirming that uh, Smiley was supposed to be Money Mike, which is completely plausible, right? I mean, Cat could have come in and not been aware that originally they had Smiley for Money Mike, and it is 100% plausible that he could have just come and upstaged him. And all of a sudden, they're like, nah, it's not going to be him. This guy has to be Money Mike. And then this guy is so funny that we need to feature him more within this video because he's so talented. You know, that happens on movie sets all the time. Someone comes in upstage who you think is going to be there originally. So I don't think that that's implausible. It's not necessarily that Smiley is lying here, but we need more context for that one. Anyways, let's keep rolling with this. Now, what was Ricky Smiley's next movie? Was it First Sunday? Big movie. Then I end up doing uh, First Sunday. Yep. Did he wear a dress in it? You bet he did. It's in my contract. This is not even my church. I, I saw this on my space. All of the parents that keep bringing their babies down here to get baptized without giving them a... I mean, that is indisputable facts. You can't, you can't come back from that one. Bam. Cedric did the same thing. He, he did wear a dress in the next video that he was in. And Cat Williams saying, I had this in my contract. I mean, you know, it could be consequential, but... Mm. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat <laughs> It's just stirring the pot, man. This is what he's doing. My man is just this chef in the kitchen right now. Oh, let me sprinkle a little bit. Oh, that's not that's not spicy enough. Hang on, let me let me just throw this person under the bus over here while I just keep on stirring. Him's joke. But Cat, I mean, Cat said you stole one of his jokes. Yeah. yeah. He said it don't line up. He's even talking about... Don't even match up with no timelines. How it don't line up that I did it on TV in 2018? <laughs> 
You came to see me at the Comedy Store do it in 2019 and then did it on the Kings of Comedy. Oh. Doesn't line up. I... I haven't heard that audio side by side. I actually just made a short on this situation. I think what's really interesting is that they both sit in a chair. They both use physical comedy. And they've got a number of very similar mannerisms. So if Cap put this out before, and there is evidence, which there is, that Cedric has been to see Cat Williams' show and has seen his bits, then it's very interesting that afterwards Cedric has a physical comedy act because he, he doesn't do like a ton of physical comedy. We've got this beat playing, you've got him sat on a chair, and he's talking about, you know, driving, playing music. The difference, and I've seen a lot of people arguing on the internet, is that Cedric's punchline and everything revolves around a spaceship, right? And black people going out into space and playing the music. Then they, they have to turn it down. The only time they turn it down is to Parallel Park, and then they carry on with it. Where Cat Williams' bit is that the music is so loud, you know, as you're driving, they don't even notice that the radio has, uh, that, not the radio, sorry, that the engine is cut off, that the car is like completely stopped running. So that's like the punchline. So the punchlines are different, right? The setups are a little bit different. But essentially, a lot of the physical comedy and the way that things kind of carry out, there's a lot of striking similarities. Like to me, there's influence there. Like, is it stolen? I, I don't know. You'd have to like really deep dive and, and really, really compare bits. But there is definitely influence there. And sure, a lot of creative people, a lot of comedians, you know, and artists will draw influences from others. I mean, that is just the nature of creativity. We all have to draw from somewhere. No creativity is 100% original. We're all influenced by our lives, our cultures, our languages, the things in which we consume. I get that. But you can definitely see where Cedric the Entertainer saw this and was aware of this, especially I think what's telling is in deflections, right? When you start to like really kind of try to deflect it. And when you say things like, well, all comedians steal. Well, hang on, what, what does that mean? That's, that's a red flag for me right there. All comedians steal. So you're saying it's okay. But why do you feel the need to justify that? Why do you have to say that? And then you have this situation where Kat is accusing Cedric of stealing a certain joke. We all see where the flags and where the scope is pointing on this, don't we? Doesn't line up. I, this is a televised joke. Feels that uh, someone else has stolen mm -hmm. some of your material? Oh, that, that's a... Especially, especially when it's televised, too, This man. is a televised joke. Feels that uh, someone else has stolen some of your material? Oh, that, that's a part of this business. Right. Like, Same Steve that's that it. went to go that's watch it. Mark Curry do... That's the quote that tells it all right oh, there. That, that's a part of this business. Right. Like, Same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry oh, had. Oh, Steve Harvey. Oh, yeah, you'll need this. A whistle? Oh, Mark, I'm teaching music, not gym. Standard issue. Screaming for help only excites the kids. Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he... First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Hightower and I'm your new music teacher. These dudes lie. Cedric's sitting here telling you why he ain't a movie star. He over here look like a walrus. You didn't say nothing. He can't even get his arms off his stomach. <laughs> This is some internet shit, and that's all I can say. So, you know. Sitting over here. Why I'm can't, not a movie can't, star. Can't, can't. What? Anybody that ever told you differently was a fat phase on liar. There's nobody can't, like you, me you in the business. Phase on because just go to straight. Phase on said that getting a Netflix special is easy. I have 12 specials. Guess how many phase on got? Zero. Okay, but, but seriously, though, if you look at your career, have you done better with stand up or acting? I have, you know, it's, it's almost time to retire. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I don't make any money. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin. How does, how, how does that make any sense? It's almost time to retire. I don't make any money. Well, in order to retire, you better have made some money. <laughs> if you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird face wife that never do. <laughs> No, who did this? Who did this? More Brianna. More Brianna, you you are comedy gold. Oh my god, no way. Hang on. Oh my. Oh no. Martin Lawrence there. Eddie Murphy there. Steve Harvey. Kevin Hart. Oh no. Oh no. Ram, you get a light skin. 
weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, in man, listen, in 20 years, won't do an interview. Nobody's ever talked to her. And that she's never... <laughs> This 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 has to go down in history, like as one of just the greatest moments of 2024. Absolutely, like e even if he, even if half the shit of what he's saying isn't technically right, it's fucking entertaining. Like it is just <laughs> never been interviewed anywhere. Cat Cat is the penultimate comedian, man. He, he is a great performer. He is a great entertainer, and. <sighs> And I love this dude. Now, understand, I'm not talking about one person. What I just told you oh, applies to seven. Shit. Whoever edited this, you had to put it up again? People. How they no. all end up with that. That's part of what you get. Be the villain. Not the guy that raises black children and ain't never done a hard drug in his life and don't have no. That's it's it's like a package, right? Almost like you're at the car dealership. Yeah. Uh, which wife do you want? Yeah, I'll take uh, I'll take that deal. The uh, comedian. Couple movies, Netflix special role. Yep. All right. Kids come with that. Mm, prenup, maybe. The guy that raises black children and ain't never done a hard drug in his life and don't have no stories of doing nobody dirty. What was he at risk? He chose drugs. And, and they'll just go out and they'll lie. The the industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't. Sh I forgot about that. I for that is a great reminder. Kevin Hart went on Charlemagne because they've had beef in the past and he wanted to address Cat on there. So right there, Kevin is the one doing that character assassination. Didn't I see somewhere too that Kevin Hart is trying to sue Cat Williams? Is that surely trying to use character defamation right there? Hey, Pot, I'm Kettle. How are you today? I'm going to turn around and throw you a defamation lawsuit. And, and they'll just go out and they'll lie. The, the industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't show up for the studio. You were set up to be the star. You didn't show up to work. You fucked off promo shoots. You fucked off your promo fucking uh, trips that they had set up for you. You became a risk to the studios, which is why the studios stopped fucking with you. What? No studios have ever said that. Look at my IMDb. It will show you that no studio has ever lost money with me on the script. I can't do that. Can we petition to get Cat Williams back on Wild and Out like that? Those were the best episodes. Steve told you that he stopped doing stand-up because he has seven TV shows. Don't Years later, I had, at one time, seven TV shows running concurrent on the air. Only problem is, when he stopped stand-up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. Years later, I had, at one time... Hang on a second. Uh-oh. Seven TV shows running concurrent on the air. Him and Steve had already apologized for me, so I gave him a pass for a decade. Why would you sit here? There's some, there's some holes here. And be like, I talked to, I saw Cat 30 times. You know, even before then, right. I've seen this guy 30 times. Like, dog, if you literally was that upset, upset about, about it, it, like, dog, Just why you? him and say, hey, yeah, hey, why say, you say, say nothing? nothing? Like, <laughs> and Cat didn't do. But this is Cedric admitting that, you know, he, he goes into those circles. He's seen Cat perform a lot. As I stand before you, Shannon, I would have bust Cedric's stomach. <laughs> Change the content because that's all you know me for is that I'm quite likely to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. All, like all my enemies all look the same in the eyes, whether it's Faison, Wanda, Aries, Spears, they all look like- Man, what you- I remember on the radio, you went on the radio interview, if I'm not mistaken, that's in Atlanta. Right. And you- This is fucked. Whoever edited this video is a comedian as well. You went on a radio right. interview. If I'm not mistaken, that's in Atlanta. Right. And you came on there with seemingly good intentions. And oh, she yeah. attacked you. It wasn't just that part. It was the fact that before I go in there, she has a conversation about, okay, now, I just want to talk to you because you just want it. Emmy for the city of Atlanta and this is in Atlanta and they just want to hear about the Emmy and hear from you and to thank you for what you did putting the city on right. okay. and we won't talk about your kids we won't talk about jail we're good at <gasps> telling us about what's going on in jail not the right one in jail get this inmate out of here <laughs> and, you're, and you're big Turn in it prison down. and you're yes, big in prison I've never been to prison uh, you have 19 felonies times. no convictions yeah. knock yeah. it off prison okay. and jail aren't the same 
No, no, okay, no, okay. no, no, calm, calm no, down, no, 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 no cases. We ain't gonna talk about none of that. Right. And immediately gets in there and goes the opposite way. I said, seven. what they like? If that's true, that is snaky behavior. Excuse me. I, excuse me. I said, answering. what are they like? You, you Just think? because you're a poor interview. You talk about other great Cat Williams moments. Cat Williams, Atlanta. Come on. Also, I want to shout out because, you know, we're a hip hop channel. Childish Gambino is one of my favorite artists to this day. I'm talking about Donald Glover. Man's a genius. What they like? Excuse me. Excuse, excuse me. me. I said, answering. what are they like? You, you Just you because think? you're a poor interviewer doesn't mean. <laughs> Never gonna say anything disrespectful to people that look like you. I'm, I'm, it's a very thin line. Yeah, Only one uh, of us uh, has twelve dollars uh, yeah. worth of jewelry on. Uh, Great shout out to Forever Twenty One. Yeah, and <laughs> this collection. Yeah. They, they tried to kill me this same weekend. Not Wait, in what? jokes. With a real gun in my real face on real what? camera. Understand I'm losing my oh, life for participating in something that goes along with my job. Like, it's two comedians. What do you mean? Damn. That she said it was going to be very That's fucked up. professional. Oh, you want an Emmy? Congratulations. You put the city on. You own for the city. Yada, yada, yada. And now, did she mention anything about the Emmy on camera? I believe you saw the video and you know. <laughs> if, if, if you can't get your blood pressure down, you can't call me down. Hey, now, whatever, little mama. If your cholesterol is 600. Whatever, little mama. I'm little mama's baby daddy. No, you Wait, oh. Is that what you wanted to do? No. That she was out of her lead? I mean, come on. It, two things probably aren't smart career decisions in your life. One, get into a war of words with a rapper and a freestyler especially. Two, get into a war of wars, war of words with a comedian because it is most likely not going to end well especially someone who's so quick off the top cat williams like i said wild now man i loved watching that show when he was on it right and the battle raps and just like the improvised comedy man so quick razor sharp mind bro let's baby daddy no, you weight class is that what you wanted to do no that she was out of her league when no. it came to because i she, didn't want to do any of it i know you didn't want didn't to, want to do but once she took it there you did you felt that you had to go there Oh, you could where? You could have said, Wanda, I didn't come here for that. I just want to do the interview. I just want to talk about what happened. Oh, you misunderstand my job. My, jo my job is to be funny. <laughs> my job is to be funny first. This has a learning experience. Most comedians don't. My job is to be funny first. Well, like I said, man. This has a learning experience. Most Just the, the meta on this guy. The, the breaking of the fourth wall. Cat Williams. Cat Williams, ladies and gentlemen. He's here. He's here all night. Ah, my job is to be funny first. This has a learning experience. Most comedians don't get booed enough. Think about this. You're stuck in traffic and the lights turn blue. God, you don't you don't I mean, this is how you end up with a Michael Blackson who's a real... I need to see more of that. African doing a fake African... Or maybe less of it. That looked painful. Excellent. Okay, well, don't... Uh, Stop, you mother suckers! What happened? You know what? I mean, I'm not gonna see me and Kat being like, you know... Uh, this guy is mad at me. All I did was give him the best advice of his life. Remember, he was wearing dirty dashikis. Dashikis. And I told him he needed to dress to be in the position position that he's trying to say that he's in and if you're the african king of comedy sir there's actually comedians in africa doing comedy if you for the african king of comedy ladies and gentlemen mm. this is michael blackson gotta put in some work and these guys they take my advice they change their whole persona and and then they hate me for it and happened you know what i mean i'm not gonna see me and cat been like you know best friends or we're friends but we're more like we've been always been like associates like you know. <laughs> this is the reckoning 2024 <laughs> and never has sucked a penis that was my only goal i didn't want to get with a white woman because i was scared she might have me running down the street like jonathan Did you go speak up? now i've had to turn not the jonathan majors <laughs> No, just, Jonathan Majors has responded to this, hasn't he? Oh she my might God! Have me running down the street like Jonathan Did Majors. You speak up? Now I've had to turn down fifty million dollars for. Listen, as a uh, representative of the whitey tighties across America, I'm also from PG County, right, which is a uh, all black area and community. So I, I've been very fortunate. I feel like to see both sides of the uh, of of what's out there, the the fish in the sea.
And one thing I will say to uh, to anyone watching, my fellow rappers out there, be careful with the white women. All right? White bitches be crazy. Street like Jonathan Majors. Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. Yeah, I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, we, we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. And, and... No, but me and you ain't never really party. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I, I... And you got to tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I... <laughs> Whoa. That's bad, boy. That is a bad bad boy no that is a bad man right there when p diddy calls you to party well it's either get the ky or start running but he might find you anyways right he's very good with uh he's i mean i i heard he stepped up his golf game he's good at finding the hole all right i'm done but before we wrap this up listen i saw ice cube had a response to this so let's dive into some of that right now too cat was 100 on on a few things uh most of what he was saying uh, a couple things you know um, I just want to clarify. Uh, Come on, Q. When we bring in a new, you know, comedian, um, we do have them try out for different roles. So Ricky did um, give Money Mike a shot. Um, but when we saw him and, you know, we kind of saw how he moved and how he was, you know, um, auditioning we decided that he would be a better uh you know santa claus uh, which was to me the perfect cast and um, when we saw M M mike i mean uh <laughs> damn i call him money mike when we <laughs> saw Kat, that says it all right there you know when i saw him he, i just knew that he was perfect for money mike um and you know cat cat you know said he wrote his role, which, I mean, the role was written, but he enhanced it. This is why mm. Cat, um, like the good ones will do, was so dope in the movie. You know, Money Mike had a small role, you know, about as big as the Santa Claus role. But when we start filming, he was giving us such magic that we kept expanding his role and giving him more mm. to do because he was on point. Safe. Um, you know, when we shoot these movies, you know, for one, the scripts are fire or they wouldn't even do it. The scripts are la a laugh out funny, but we shoot the script. But once we get what we need from the script, we let the comedians ad lib, riff, you know, play with the words, mm. do their thing. You know, we give them a take where they can, or two, three takes where they can go off and do what they feel. Um, you know, sometimes it makes the movie, sometimes it don't. You know, when somebody gives you... I feel like, you know, what Cube is saying, like it's backed up by what Cat Williams said. And honestly, from Cat's side of things, I just feel like it was just the boiling point, wasn't it? Like all these people have said stuff and they've gone on Sharp Show, like he said, and like he set it up. And he is merely like responding. It's not like he came out and started firing all these shots out of nowhere. Like all these people said something that he felt was not justified as the truth. And he felt like they weren't telling the full picture and the true story. Like Smiley talking about Friday and how, you know, he should have had the money Mike roll and blah, blah, blah. And he was the one who was owning the movie. Well, Cube has just set the record straight, hasn't he? Cat Williams, as soon as they saw him, that man is Money Mike. That man was so good being Money Mike, we got to give him more lines. Let's let him do more stuff, right? And Cat Williams started feeding ideas and expanding. So you can see from Cat's side of things when he's like, hang on, no, 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 no. Smiley is not setting the record straight here. Camera died. He's like, no, Smiley is not setting the record straight. I'm going to tell it. The winners are going to tell it. Losers are not allowed to rewrite history in his words. Jules, you want to... Uh try to make sure that makes the movie um so in the movie there's second thing i want to clear up it was never i would never shoot a scene uh right in a movie especially like friday that's why i want to keep sake um, on it where you actually see this happening on camera 
That ain't my style. If you check out any of my movies, they not raunchy. Um, you know, we did a movie called Players Club mm -hmm. where the subject matter was a little raunchy, but but for the most part, um, even that, we we left it to your imagination. So yeah. The only yeah no i mean it listen it makes sense it's comedy at the end of the day but there there's even some lines to comedy and i just feel like you know the raw word we're not going to say it right now because all hail the youtube monetization gods but um yeah there's there's just certain lines you you don't want to cross right and i don't know if you can ever truly make it funny I, I don't think you can take a situation like that and spin it into uh into something funny and obviously cube backing that up but yeah that was a little bit of cube side of things i felt like it was important just to do a quick little weigh in from him such a legend you know shout out to cube as well i tell you what you, you could just see why people are still talking about it why things are getting shook up i think the most interesting thing um is definitely some of the side by sides. I really want to see more of like the side by side jokes between like Cat Williams and Cedric the Entertainer. That's why, like I said, I'm I'm doing a short on that one. Uh, the Steve Harvey stuff too. I want to see like more side by sides on that. But like the thing is, like there's a lot of him making points, and you start to see these connections, and you start to see, hmm, context is very important. You know, when things are released versus when things come out afterwards. And like we talked about before, comedians, especially at the higher levels, run in similar circles. They're going to see each other performing. They're going to see each other doing acts. So what do you guys think? Let me know. Comment down below if you like the receipts. If there's anything else that you think that we should check out with this situation. Is the man lying? Is he an angel of God right now shedding light upon us all and upon the world of comedy? Cat Williams, you were Knoxville certified. Hope you guys like today's video. Let's for some reason you're here at the end. Obviously, enjoy the content. Do me a huge favor. Support the channel directly. Subscribe notifications on. Really, really does go a long way. I love you guys. Stay safe, stay positive. It's one Doxo. You know, I'll catch you again.